Hey friend, welcome to Job with Julie, hosted by me, Julie Slattery. This podcast is listener supported and it's an outreach of the ministry called Authentic Intimacy, which is dedicated to helping people make sense of God and sexuality. Well, when we start to recognize sin in our lives, our natural tendency is to muscle in with our behaviors and to try really hard to stop sinning. I've done it, you've done it, and unfortunately, we probably know it doesn't work very well. In fact, that strategy can lead to feeling discouraged and defeated in your relationship with God. You know, the Christian life is not about behaving perfectly, but really is a call to have a posture of surrender. Instead of trying harder, we need the Holy Spirit to take over every element of our lives. That's the only way that we can live as we've been called to live. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Hannah and I are going to be looking at the foundations of this idea of surrender in Scripture and the difference between struggling and surrendering and what it looks like to be a Christian who resists the care and leading of the Holy Spirit. So whether you are struggling with sexual sin, with pride, bitterness, whatever it might be, I hope this conversation is really an encouragement to you. So let's get into it. Welcome to Java with Julie. Hannah. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, good to be with you again. Everybody you know, loves it when you're on with me. It's always fun to be with you. And the biggest surprise in my morning was that you got an iced coffee instead of a hot coffee for you, our conversation. You haven't been hanging with me I lately. Know. I, I thought you're still a hot coffee drinker. I'm an everything coffee drinker. <laughs> so, but I did make the switch probably about six months ago to having the preference of cold brew now. You know what's funny? The name Java with Julie. Sometimes it just blurs together. Like you think it's just one word. It's just like, oh, I listen to Java with Julie. When you really sit and think about it, it's literally Java coffee yeah. with Julie. Yeah. You have been a lover of coffee, I feel like, before it was cool. Really? I didn't yeah. know I did anything before it was cool. I think so. Okay. I mean, I know coffee's always been cool, but I'm just saying like you, for as long as you've been around on this earth, have been passionate about coffee. Yeah, I think... Um since college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here she Which is. Which was a long time ago. So now we're sitting here, <laughs> Java with Julie. Yes. Drinking your favorite beverage and circling around to a conversation that somehow you always find yourself in. Yes. Coffee and sexuality <laughs> somehow. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that's what you should have named the podcast instead of Java oh with my, Julie? It doesn't have the same ring. Coffee and sexuality. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you made the right call. Yeah. Java with Julie. There you go. But as we drink our Java, we are going to talk about sexuality. We are. Of course. Of course. Yeah. (laughs) And I think a lot of this conversation is going to center around a conference that we have coming up in October. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I would love to. Yeah. Give us the rundown. Yeah. Every other year we do a conference called Reclaim. Yes. And each time we do Reclaim, we sort of have a theme like last time it was God, Sex, and Your Marriage. It was mm-hmm. more focused on marriage. This fall, October 18th and 19th, the theme is Surrendered Sexuality. Love it. So it is for everyone who loves Jesus. So we're saying, hey, ages 15 and up, single married, divorced, widowed, male, female. Come one, come all. Yeah, and we're really addressing this question, how does your relationship with Jesus change how you view and steward your sexuality? Love it. And this is going to be in Akron, Ohio. Yeah, Cleveland. Cleveland, We're Ohio. We're go a little north. Yep. Okay, okay. Uh, re- we'll still take it. So today, I just want to talk more with you about this idea. So not the conference. We're not talking conference logistics, but where this theme, Surrendered Sexuality, came from, why mm. this... I mean, when you pick a theme for this, that's a big deal. Like, yeah. it's guiding the conversations, all the, the speakers who are coming in, mm-hmm. the discussion... So why did we land on surrendered sexuality? What is that? Just like give us a summary and a why. Um, Yeah, boy, I've been on this journey, Hannah, and you've been on much of it with me of kind of wading into this strange field of biblical sexuality. And it's been about a dozen years for me now. It's a lot. It is a long time. It is a lot. And uh, you know me well, and you also know, like, surrender is a big theme for me. Mm -hmm. So just what is it not just to, like, live a life that's obedient to God, but to live a life that's really surrendered to Him? And I think every believer, like, when you 
come into relationship with God, you spend a lot of time like trying to figure out how to please him. Like what actions do I need to change? Mm. You know, like, will he be mad at me if I do this thing wrong? Particularly related to things like sexuality. Like, will God still love me if I sleep with my boyfriend or if I'm gay or if I divorce my wife? You know, like these questions people wonder about, how does God feel about my behavior? And we can spend a lot of time and energy like trying to harness in our behavior. Like I promise I won't look at pornography again, or I'm trying to change Hmm. and this relational pattern. Yeah. We almost like change our glasses that we view decision-making from. Right. Oh, okay. Now I'm a Christian. So like this is how I decide these things. Right. Yeah. And then people become weary So Mm -hmm. even as you're listening, you may be very weary of fighting sexual temptation or of battling same-sex desires or of even trying to make sense of what's happening in our culture or loving a spouse who is not easy to love. And you get to the place where you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've learned in my own relationship with the Lord is God actually wants to bring us to that place of, I don't think I can do this anymore. And we read about that in Romans chapter 7 where the Apostle Paul got to that place where he's like, I keep trying to do what's right and I keep falling back into what's wrong. Mm. And essentially he's like, I give up. He's like, he makes a <laughs> statement. He's like, I'm a terrible person. Yeah, I'm a I can't terrible, do it. I'm a terrible Christian. Yeah. And he says, who can save me from this body of sin? And he said, praise be to the Lord who can save me. And then if you keep reading into Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8 is all about the freedom of surrender, walking filled with the Holy Spirit. And so there's a difference between trying really hard to please God with your sexuality and sexual choices and just giving it all to Him Hmm. and just being like, I give up, like, I can't do this. Lord, this whole thing just makes no sense to me, but I need to love you and trust you enough that I just surrender it. Like, Hmm. I surrender my life and my body is a living sacrifice to the Lord. And I mm-hmm. want to live in the power of your, your spirit. And so that's the theme people may have heard me say before. Like, if your sexuality is like a spiritual territory, how much do you control and how much have you just given over to the Lord? Mm. And I think all of us would say there's portions that I'm still holding on to or trying to control instead of just saying, God is all yours. So that's the theme. I'm so passionate about it because there's so much freedom when we get to the point of surrender. And there's so much power when we get to the point of surrender because we're essentially inviting the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit to live through us. Hmm. But it's a complicated thing to try to communicate and try to help people envision. It is. I think it could be hard for someone to know the difference between hearing that and understanding it logically and actually walking it out spiritually. Yes. Yeah. So if someone would hear that, that's a beautiful description of that theme, Julie, of why the banner is surrendered sexuality and why this is a conversation worth having, pursuing. But if someone were to say, man, I don't know if I'm surrendered or not. Yeah. What would you see would be signs if you were or weren't? Like what would almost be... I don't know, a litmus test for that? Mm -hmm. Am I trying to make it (laughs) too analytical? One of the ways that we understand surrender is by just, you know, I was sharing, I've gotten to hear all these testimonies, Mm -hmm. is by hearing the testimony of people and what's happened to them when they've surrendered. And Mm -hmm. so I intentionally plan the speakers. The number one thing for me was, is their story a story of surrender? Not just here's what you do. Oh man, what a good question. Yeah. And so, you know, I I think the greatest example of that is Jackie O'Perry's going to be there. If you follow her, if you know about her story, like she is just a surrendered woman. Doesn't Mm. mean perfect. None of us are. But she has such a powerful living testimony of what it is to surrender Mm. identity and sexuality. And so I'm excited to have speakers like her who can live out and describe this surrender process in ways that's different for me because it'll appeal to different people. Mm. Yeah, and really shows 
the difference within the body of Christ yeah. in a beautiful way. Yeah. That our stories all have different pieces, but the theme of being surrendered is still the same. Yeah. Troy Melissa Haas, Troy was a missionary, very on fire for the Lord, but had a sexual addiction on the mission field. Mm. You know, and it got discovered and their marriage fell apart and obviously their ministry and both Troy and Melissa have stories of their individual surrender, what it looked like for her to walk through that, mm-hmm. what it looked like for him to walk through that. So those are just some examples of there are going to be people there that you can identify with, uh, that you're going to see, okay, this is what God may want to do in my own life. Mm-hmm. I think it's a focus, an intention to live a surrendered life. And I think we become more and more surrendered. So... That is the Christian walk and what is meant to be that as I grow in my intimacy with God and my abiding in Christ, like he's living more and more through me. Mm. So I think, what are some of the litmus tests? I think the more we try to be in control, the less surrendered we are. And again, even in our efforts to please God, we can try to control everything. Kind of ironic. Yeah, it? it is. And, I, <laughs> yeah. and like I said, I think Paul's a great example of that yeah. in what he writes in Romans. We all are going to try to please God first in our own strength mm. until we get to the place where we just like, I got nothing. Yeah. Like I tried all my tricks and I'm a hot mess and mm. I'm so stressed out and I'm so afraid of failure. And I think we all have to continue like get to that point and hopefully start living in a rhythm of daily getting to that point where we're like, God, I don't want to try to please you today. I just want to surrender to you. Well, and it's interesting thinking about doing that big picture in your own heart, your own life, your own interaction with the Father, but then also doing it in these specific areas. Right. So saying, not only is this my life surrender to you, Father, Son, Spirit, like all that I am, but like, oh, I also need to do that within my relationship. I also need to do that within right. sexuality. Yeah. Because I imagine it would be possible, <laughs> maybe speaking from experience, where you could be at that posture with the Lord spiritually. And then all of a sudden a different area of your life comes up and you yeah. realize, <laughs> oh, I'm not really surrendered here. Yes. Do you think that is true for sexuality It for, I don't know, more often maybe? Yeah. Like that's an area that we are less likely sure. to be surrendered yeah, in? I think so. Um, Why do you think? I think, first of all, there's been just a natural tendency over the course of modern Christianity to separate sexuality from our intimate walk with God. So when sexuality has been discussed and sometimes it's just totally ignored, it's all behavioral. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So it's never, God cares about this area of your heart. Like God cares about your wounds and he cares about your questions about sexuality. So I think that's that's starting to change a little bit with this generation. But in the generation that I grew up in and really the whole history of the church was you're not allowed to ask questions about sexuality. You just... Yeah. Need... So how could this ever be surrendered? Right. Because it had to be something that you owned and like figured out almost right. on or your just own. suppressed. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, or pretend you know, it didn't like, exist. Yeah, like let's just not be sexual people so right. that we can avoid sin. Yeah. And so there's not been teaching or modeling or even encouragement of what it is to invite God into mm. the heart territory of sexuality. Yeah. Um, you know, God, we, we would say about a lot of topics, God, God is big enough for your questions. Right. He's not offended that you're asking these questions. But for some reason, when it comes to sexuality, it's almost as if we've shut down all questioning. Mm. Like the Bible says it, so just do it. Are somehow questions connected to surrender? I believe they are. Yeah, how so? Yeah. I'm interested that you brought that up when talking about being surrendered. Yeah, because, you know, surrender is, again, like I'm giving it all to the Lord. Yeah. And if we're not allowed to ask questions, we might surrender our behavior, but we, we're never allowed to grapple with the fact that we haven't surrendered our beliefs or our pain. Oof. You know, so for example, let's say you have a Christian who is same-sex attracted, and they keep hearing over and over again, you can't have a same-sex relationship. You can't, 
have a gay marriage. Like the Bible says, don't do those things. And so they may be very sincere in saying, okay, I won't do those things. God has surrendered this to you. But down deep inside, there's these agonizing questions of, God, like, do you love me? Do you see my loneliness? Mm. Do you see my brokenness? Even the belief of the purpose of sexuality. So, you know, I think this is a something I'm hugely passionate about. If we don't really examine what we believe about our sexuality, but we just try to behave, we have doubts about the goodness of God. Because mm. if I believe that my sexuality is about self-expression, and I can't be an authentic person if I don't express myself, and then God says, don't express yourself, then God's not a good God. Mm. But in our culture, I think what we don't realize is that we've just warped our understanding of the purpose of our sexuality. And so surrender is engaging at that much deeper level that, God, not only do I want to know what you say about my behavior, but I need you to transform my thinking. Mm. Show me where I believe lies. You know, show me where I have wounds and longings that I just keep ignoring, but you want to enter into to heal. Mm. So that's why I think it's impossible to really be surrendered unless we give ourselves permission to go into these deeper places of our heart and we really invite God into those spaces. It's interesting because towards the beginning of the conversation when you described this idea of a fully surrendered sexuality, you used the word freedom. Mm -hmm. And now when you're talking about this surrendered, you're talking about being willing to have these very hard, reflective questions in yeah. our own heart and soul that we're bringing to God. It's kind of interesting both of those existing at the same time. Do you know what I mean? That it's like, it's bringing this great like freedom yeah. and something, I mean, with the word freedom, you think like light, you know? Right. While also something that is very heavy. Yeah, but that's, you know what I mean? <laughs> it is, but it's really how we get free. Yeah. So, you know, in Second Corinthians, Paul talks about spiritual warfare. And he says, we don't fight battles the way the world does. What we do is we look at strongholds that mm -hmm. set themselves up in opposition to the knowledge of God. And so what Paul is saying there is that there are these walls, there's these barriers that keep people from knowing God for salvation, but also from knowing Jesus in the way that he wants to abide in us and with us. Mm -hmm. And so those strongholds are really lies, like... They're ways of thinking, their belief systems that create a barrier between us and God. Mm -hmm. And when you look at sexuality, there's all kinds of lies and belief systems that set themselves up as barriers of, of with us and intimacy with God. It's the belief system that if God were a good God, he would not prohibit me from having the kind of relationship I think I need. Mm -hmm. Like that's a real barrier to people trusting yeah, the Lord. Wall. It that's is a, a <laughs> huge wall. Or if God were a good God, he would not have allowed me to be abused as a child. So there are, are sincere Christians who are walking around trying to please God with their behavior, but they have no space or permission to ask those questions about the strongholds in their lives. Now they will never be free unless God steps into those strongholds mm. and helps them like wrestle with those deep questions. So freedom comes from that barrier is gone now. Like mm. I still have some questions that I'm waiting for God to answer in heaven, but I no longer feel like there's this huge wall between me and God. I feel like I know he's near to me. I know he loves me. I know he's given me the power and strength to walk out the life that he's called me to. So that's when I'm talking about freedom. Mm. In this conversation, it does feel like, though, it would be possible to be a Christian mm -hmm. and never surrender, especially in the area of sexuality. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. possible. Yes. What happens there? I mean, what happens if we don't say yes to that mm -hmm. invitation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is possible. I, you know, I think there's a difference between our salvation, knowing Jesus for salvation, and being saved. And then the process of sanctification of now I'm called to be a disciple. And we see in the New Testament Christian lives, you know, like 
some of them were saved in, in the church, but we see like real life ongoing wrestling with what does it look like now to live mm-hmm. a sanctified life? And that's, if you read the epistles, if you read Paul's letters and first and second Peter and John's epistles is like, the whole point of it is now that you know Christ and you know the lavish grace that he's given you, like here's how you should start walking. And mm-hmm. it's a process. So there are Christians who never really go down that road or they go down that road and they get stalled and they stop. And, and turn around maybe and say, never mind. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And I'm not going to get the quote right, but I remember reading a quote where it said the most miserable people on earth are Christians who have not surrendered. Ooh. Yeah. That's an be- intense sentence. Because it's like once you come into Christ, you can never just be carefree and happy again, like living as you want. There's a conviction of sin and there's this sense of, wow, I gave my life to the Lord, but I'm not really living it. And so you're torn, but you're not surrendered enough to have the power of the Holy Spirit doing that work in you. Well, I really got to think about that for a minute. That's heavy. Yeah? How so? Because when I ask that question of like, is it possible to be a believer and not be surrendered? I feel like that's a big percentage of believers. So to think about that being... (laughs) said that that is such a miserable spot to be in. That's just hard. It is. I mean, it's quenching the Holy Spirit. It's not inviting the Holy Spirit to bring the fruits that he brings, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness. So if I'm a Christian who knows I should be living that kind of life, but I don't have the power of the Spirit to do it, then that's a hard place to be. And yeah. and I and I, not very joy filled no. either. No. And it's not like all of us are either 0% surrendered or 100% surrendered. But to the extent that God is asking us to surrender and we keep saying no, we're essentially inviting the loving discipline of God who will not allow us to be content in that. Hmm. And so you said that's a lot of Christians it is. But how many Christians do you know that like their regular life is filled with love and joy and peace mm. and contentment and kindness. Unfortunately, the majority of Christians in the Western world, we have so much that we don't know that we should surrender. We don't know how. And we live Christian lives that have very little of that kind of joy and peace that God intends for us. Man, I just have so many stories coming in my mind, Julie, of people who have been believers their whole life and then experienced that surrender. And they're almost have, at times have been like, man, was I even a Christian before? Because yeah. this is amazing. Like truly experiencing that union with Christ mm-hmm. on a whole different level. Yeah. And when you hear surrender, you think, oh, no, I have to surrender. Like, And I have people tell me, like, will my life be miserable? You know, like, what would God ask me to do? But when you talk to a Christian who surrendered, they say exactly what you said. I never knew that this kind of joy and peace and just union with Christ, knowing his love, I never knew that that was possible. Man, it's like we fear the best thing he came to give. Yeah, which is the enemy. Like, again, the stronghold, the enemy wants to keep that stronghold so that you never know what it is to live in the fullness of the life that God has given you. Yeah. So this is true both individually, I guess, for people to experience this surrender from their heart to God's. Is this also, is surrendered sexuality something that you would view, I don't even know how to necessarily ask this, like as a couple or as the church, like more of this like big picture collective, or is it one-on-one? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, it's both and. Yeah. So, you know, that this surrender happens in individual hearts, but there are, I think, cultural strongholds. Uh, There's cultural idolatry. There always has been. It's just different with each culture Mm -hmm. that keep the collective family of God away from revival and truth and intimacy. And so you see in history, sometimes God like tearing down that stronghold in a whole culture Mm -hmm. or in a whole city 
where it's like they all are kind of stuck on something. And in some ways, even the way they do church or the way they talk to each other, the way we talk to each other will keep that stronghold in place instead of challenging it. Mm. Man, well, you can see how this could be a theme for an entire conference. (laughs) I mean, there's so many pieces to it. I think big picture, things Mm. that are very practical, more one-on-one, entering these like all these different pieces you're talking about, these strongholds, these things from our past, the way that the church Mm -hmm. has talked about it. And I guess you believe this so much that there's so much talk about this, that this is also the current book you are writing. It is. True? Yeah, I am in... With the theme of Surrendered Sexuality. It actually has the same title. Oh, how convenient is that? (laughs) uh, Surrendered Sexuality, How Knowing (laughs) Jesus Changes Everything. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So you have a few things to say about this then. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's definitely something that my mind and my heart have been really working on the last probably six months or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think knowing you and watching the past 12 years of ministry and all that authentic intimacy has covered, talked about, questions that are asked, conferences. I mean, this is just like, you know, over a decade of content and diving in and teaching. But I think also for you, your own time with God, you and, you know, Julie Slattery's heart with God, not just this like big picture. Why has surrender been such a big word like for you personally? Because I think that's really woven into this, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's what I've experienced, but also what I've seen Hannah, I've been so privileged to hear hundreds of stories of Mm. transformation from marriages that were dead and then resurrected to sexual addictions where people were in bondage and trying to get out of it for years and years and years, and now they're free. Mm. You know, and individuals who were just crippled by the impact of trauma, betrayal, you know, brokenness, and they're walking in the freedom of Christ. Mm. It might still limp a little uh, yeah. because we're not in heaven, but there's a love for Jesus and a freedom and a healing that it's like, wow, praise the Lord. So I hear these stories. I get to see them. I get to interview them on Java with Julie. And then I've experienced my own personal walk. And the only answer is surrender. Mm. You know, it's like we can kind of improve things here and there by putting in discipline and trying hard. And I would say even reading the scripture, which is so important. Because we're pretty good at doing that as a church. We are. and like, <laughs> We are great at like a four step. Yeah. And quoting verses. But there's no power until we surrender. Mm. So until I surrender, it's me with the strength that I have trying to do the best I can to please God, to be well, Mm. to fix things. But surrender is, it's like a cup. It's either my cup of whom my heart is either going to be filled with me or it's going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that's the biggest battle of the Christian life is even in my desire to please God, is it going to come from the energy and wisdom and thoughts of Julie Slattery Or am I going to be in a posture where I'm emptied enough where like Paul said, like it's, I've been crucified with Christ. It's not I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me, Mm. that he's doing the work. If you read Paul's letters, he keeps saying, this is happening in my life because the working of God's power in me. Mm. And I think in my own life and in ministry now for many years, Western Christians don't know the power of God in their lives. Man, say that again. <laughs> well, we, just, we just don't. We just yeah. keep trying harder and I we know. keep trying to figure it out and we keep trying to fix it. And then it sets up the cycle of like trying and failure, even trying and pride and hypocrisy. But when we get to the place where we realize that the whole point and goal of the Christian life is to be so emptied of self that Christ can live in and through me. There's a power that comes in our personal lives and our interactions with others and the way we love that we start to actually be able to live the life that God calls us to. 
So I've become so convinced that that's the answer. And it's, I've become so convinced that that's the answer in my own walk with the Lord, but also seeing my brothers and sisters try so hard and be so discouraged mm. that I just want them to know the power of God in their lives and the freedom that comes from that. Man, amen. There's nothing better. Yeah. I'm on the edge of my seat as you're talking about all this. I'm ready for October. <laughs> well, I, I know you've experienced it, Hannah. I mean, you've been on yeah. your own journey of surrender. Yeah. You were raised in the church. You kind of know what it is to try to do life in Hannah's strength. And Oh, yeah. I had like the best evangelical resume in the state of Ohio. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like I've ran my race well uh-huh. <laughs> as far as like knowing all the right things and really being fueled off of my own desire to somehow repay God for how good he was, that I had to like muster up my own strength, energy, life, and like almost prove this to God Mm -hmm. instead of being at the surrendered spot. Yeah. 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 It's night and day. It is night and day. So what's interesting is we're having this conversation because in that whole thing you just said there, you're not even using the word sexuality Mm -hmm. necessarily. But you're taking this like core tenet of it is not us, but Christ in us, mm-hmm. and that it walks into and overtakes also this area of sexuality. Mm-hmm. What's interesting to me is at this conference, thinking about the starting age of 15, so let's say that we have 15-year-olds in this conference all the way up to 85-year-olds, mm-hmm. the questions coming into that room are all going to be so different. Yeah. But it's somehow so unifying to think that the answer is all hidden within surrender. Yeah. Like, could that really be true from 15 to 85, single, married? Like, every hurt, brokenness, question around sexuality coming to this core center. Yeah. Why is it that we're still learning from King David? Mm -hmm. and the Apostle Paul and Peter and studying the life of Esther. Like, why is it that we think we have anything in common with these people who lived across the world from us thousands of years ago, didn't know what a smartphone was? (laughs) It's just, we have nothing in common. We don't even know at some level the things they wrestled with. Mm. Um, Like when Paul says that he has this thorn in the flesh, He never tells us what it is. And the point is it doesn't matter because the journey of knowing God and wrestling with God and surrendering to God is the same. That's something that early on in this ministry, I learned really quickly, you know, people's wrestling with sexuality shouldn't be siloed. You know, I I think a lot of times we're like, okay, here's the people who have LGBT questions and here are the people who have the sexual addiction and pornography issues. Yeah, this is the room for teenagers yeah. only, teenager And the questions. singles only, yeah. you know, yeah. and the marrieds only. It's like when... Not you, how we doing it at Authentic Intimacy. No, it's like when you, when you get down to it, it's all the same battle. Yeah. You know, and the questions might be a little unique here or there, but it's all the same spiritual battle. And actually, we all have some of the same questions about, can I trust God? Where is He? You know, why is he not fulfilling my desires? Will he forgive me? How do I find freedom? Those are the questions that everyone is asking. Yeah. And at this, I mean, the beauty of what you've done over the past decade, I think over the last 10 years of Java with Julie, if you look at all the topics, all the conversations, that is represented so well of no matter the age, no matter the background, no matter the question, we're all have this like similar unity as the body of Christ in this area of sexuality. But man, when you're physically in a room at Mm -hmm. a conference, Julie, I mean, I remember that from the conference two years ago, like literally looking around and seeing that just unity of the body of Christ. Like we're not all here because we're in the same stage. Mm -hmm. We are young. We are old. We are Mm -hmm. married. We are single. We are all over. But our heart, our unity of the body being here, saying we want to understand more and more what Mm -hmm. the surrendered life looks like Mm -hmm. is so beautiful. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of funny, Hannah, when I have conversations with people who are just kind of entering into this topic of sexuality in the church, Mm -hmm. they're like, 
do you feel so awkward talking about this? And, and as I talk to them, they really feel like they're the only one struggling. You're and like, there's still, let me invite you into the room. <laughs> there's still so much like shame and yeah. everyone else has everything figured out. Yeah. And it's like, I've been swimming in these waters so long that I'm like, no, let me just tell you, nobody has it figured out. Yeah. You know, if you could see the the silent struggles that the people you do life with, if you could see them, mm. if you could see the spiritual realm of how many strongholds there are in our and the people we, we do small group with and the people at our church and the people in our community, if you could see it, like you would be overwhelmed. Mm. And so, you know, God has invited me into this space of, at some level, being able to see that mm-hmm. and address it. And, uh, you know, the other thing that I say a lot is the only reason I talk about sexuality is because I care so much about people's relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And if this is the stronghold that nobody calls out, then there are so many people who... Just will, are all stuck. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And it's like, and they just kind of resolve themselves for having to be stuck. And it's like, I don't want that for them. I don't want that for the church. I really want them to experience the goodness of God in every area of their life and the freedom of being able to trust Him. Mm. And a part of that, Julie, is, I guess, experiencing and understanding that that is ongoing. Yeah. It's not a one and done, all right, my sexuality surrender. Yeah. (laughs) I'm in the clear. Like, this is this continual ongoing surrender. It is an ongoing surrender, like... I remember when this is probably like 10 years ago, I was really wrestling with this idea of surrender. And I felt like probably a lot of Christians feel like I keep surrendering, but I keep failing. Like, Mm. I don't know if I have it within me to surrender. Mm. Like there's so many parts of me that I'm unaware of. And I read in one of my favorite books, it's called Absolute Surrender by Andrew Murray. He made this statement and it just... It meant so much to me. He said, if you surrender right now, God accepts your surrender, even if you don't even know what you're doing. And not only does he accept it, he will work it out in you. Hmm. Like he takes it as a sealed, okay, Julie, I see that your heart is to surrender. And I know that you have no idea what that looks like. And you don't have the strength within you to make it happen, but I will make it happen in time. How amazing is the spirit of God? That's unreal. Yeah, Just at work doing the thing that he desires from us, but he's doing the work. He's doing the work. Yeah. And, and so yes, the craziest thing. (laughs) And so, yes, it is like, it is like an ongoing thing where, you know, God brings up seasons in my life where I'm like, okay, yeah, Lord, I need to let that go. I need to surrender that. Back to surrender. But I also think that there are key times in our life where we face the question of surrender Mm. and we make the decision Lord, I'm going to surrender my marriage to you or my desire for marriage to you. Mm. You know, I'm going to surrender this devastating thing that happened. I'm going to surrender it to you. I don't know how you're going to meet me, but my heart is to just put it all before you. And so I do think that there are those moments in our lives where we do make that choice and then we get to see God start to work that out in us. Mm. Well, I think for those who will be in the room with us in October, Julie, to hear this surrendered sexuality conversation, this whole day event, having this dialogue is going to be so powerful. But I'm also excited that for those who can't join in Ohio, coming soon in book form. Yes. Well, coming <laughs> later. You're still writing it. I'm but still I, just, writing I, it, yeah. I love knowing that this conversation and this theme will be something we will continue to talk about at Authentic Intimacy. And um, we could have it in our hands, yeah. too. Really to uh, walk it out. Yeah, Lord willing, probably about this time next year, the book will be released. And mm-hmm. I, we were talking off mic. I think this might be the hardest book I've ever written. Which is a big statement uh-huh. because you've spent your whole career writing books. Yeah. So to say this is the hardest one. Uh, yeah, I'm really wrestling with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, as you can hear from the conversation, again, there's a freedom in it, but it's hard. It's hard and it's just, you know, there we need to have these deeper conversations around surrender and sexuality, but sometimes the deeper conversations can feel like they're not practical. Mm. And so I'm trying to say, okay, what does this practically look like? But then when we get into the practical, we can fall into sort of the legalism 
of yeah, a little bit of a conundrum. There. Yeah. So it's like, that's, that's <laughs> what I'm struggling with the most is, yeah. you know, how do we talk about the deep issues of the heart, but then also address the real life stuff? Like what in the world do I do with my desires as a single person? Yeah. You know, like the real life questions of is masturbation wrong or what do I do with my pornography struggle? Like practically. Mm-hmm. So it's just people want need, want and need both. So that's, That's the biggest tension is trying to marry those two together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, God doesn't want us to be just spiritual robots following his commands without leaning into Noah's heart. He wants us to know him. He wants us to love and trust him and follow him because we know and love and trust him. So do you feel like you really know God, that you truly understand his heart? and that you're on a journey of continuously saying, not my will, but yours be done? If you've listened to this conversation and feel like you are not in a posture of surrender, I don't want you just to sit in shame or beat yourself up about it. Instead, I wanna encourage you to lean into what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. This is an invitation to go deeper, to let go, and to experience more of God's power in your life. It's truly a beautiful invitation. If you'd like to join us for the conference, Reclaim Surrender Sexuality, or if you want to learn more about this event, you can head to AuthenticIntimacy.com slash Reclaim 2024, or just click on the link in our show notes. In the meantime, just visit our Sex and Culture page linked also in the show notes, where you can find a free guide to support you on your journey of surrender. I pray this conversation has really blessed you and continues to challenge you in all areas of your life, not just your sexuality. Well, that's it for this week, and I look forward to having coffee with you next time for more Job with Julie.